ਸੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਈਜ਼ੀ ਹੁਣ ਢੋਲਕੀ ਮਾਸਟਰ ਦਾ ਕਹਿ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੀ ਸੱਚ ਏ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਮਿਊਜ਼ਿਕ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਇਹਨੇ ਮਿਊਜ਼ਿਕ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਬਣਨਾ ਸੋ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਦੇਖ ਲੋ ਇਸ ਸਟੀਵ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਰਗੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਫੋਕ ਗਾਉਣਾ ਪਸੰਦ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਕੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਕਰਦਾ ਤੂੰ ਬਈ ਫੋਕ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਸਵਾਦ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਜਾਣਾ ਮੋੜ ਦਾ ਕਿ ਐਮ ਇਹ ਸਾਬਤ ਕਰਤਾ ਕਿ ਤੂੰ ਅਸਲੀ ਫੋਕ ਸਿੰਗਰ ਹੈ ਸ਼ਾਬਾਸ਼ੂ 1 2 3 4 Yeah, good, good. I'm excited. Excited to meet you. Uh, uh, I'm heard... more excited than you, seriously. <laughs> I've heard so much about you from uh, uh, our friend Tubsy. Uh, wow. Okay. Well. And uh, he mentioned you on the show. And because uh, we were, uh, the reason I asked you on, because we were talking about live bands, live singing, the UK Bhangra scene. And I, I, was, yeah. I was a bit like, ah, it's finished, man. It's no, there's no more. And he goes, no, no, it's. It, we need to push it. We need to get people on. And he goes, there's loads of singers out there and he's rattling off names and you was one of them. And, uh, mm. after the meet, after the, 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 the podcast, uh, we spoke privately and, uh, okay. and, uh, he said, you know, we, you should do more to me. And uh, he goes, you should get more. <laughs> these young, <laughs> he's telling me who to have on my show. And oh, eh? because awesome. he said, look, you should get these people on and support them and help them. And mainly because I've been in, in the same, uh, shoes as you right and yeah, i was course, yeah. i was that young guy who wanted to sing no one gave me a chance i could never get on a radio station for an interview yeah, yeah, i yeah. just want people to listen to me man and you know uh, give me a chance yeah and I, I think i mean first of all i mean you know uh, uh lovely to kind of be on the show sat it's uh, I've, I've listened to kind of even some of your earlier ones british british asian podcasts about going back about two three years ago now maybe more oh, wow yeah yeah um <laughs> and i re- i remember when you interviewed tubsy body for the first time you got it. uh and you guys uh you, 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 i could hear you guys for a gig i could hear all the background noise and i could hear it all and like you know you guys had a at length discussion i think it was even two parts i think if i remember correctly yeah yeah um so yeah it's good and you know for him to kind of mention me that's just the the sign of the greatness of 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 tubsy body but yeah you know the, the live scene it's it, it's not gone uh you know and it, it's not gone and, and certainly certainly whilst a few of us and you know like you know there's a lot of young musicians coming through which is absolutely amazing um you know like myself i'm, I'm, I'm a young musician uh, and i get the opportunity to play on stage with my band uh, the live experience and you know with some of the best singers you could imagine like you know you mm. could think of and it's it's for me that was what it was always all about mm. uh you know like the singing everything came later the singing even happened it was an accident you know I'll go back, go into a bit more it was an accident it wasn't meant to happen mm. um but as a kid uh, I grew up just in love with the the UK live scene I was brought up on videos uh, VHS is town and country club you know that that was my holy grail that concert the famous concert I think it was Bangladesh night 91 yeah um, I remember that I remember. and I'm an, I mean I don't even remember watching it until, you know, obviously I was watching it a long time before I can actually remember. And, you know, when my mum and dad wanted to get me to sit down and shut up and eat or they'd get me to stop crying, they put that on. 
uh, along with there was there was um, there was another show Bangra Beat used to come on quite regularly. Yeah. Right, and I don't remember any of these shows, what they're called. I just remember them watching them back now on YouTube and, and so on. I'm like, yeah, and, you know, I've got them recorded on VHS. Uh, there was a program on Channel 4, Band of Budger, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right, and DCS were on it. Yeah. And that one, like, I watched that so much, you know, VHS all dick, dick, kasati, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> they had to throw it away. It was, you know, it didn't work. It didn't work after that anymore, right? Uh, and I, I came across it, funny story. I came across it um, only a few weeks ago on YouTube, and I filmed it, and I filmed a little bit, and I sent it to Shin, Uncle, right? And I said, Uncle, I goes, look, I've been a DCS fan since before I even remember, right? I was like, you know, this is what my mum and dad used to get me to, like, eat to or sit down or shut up was they want to keep me occupied and you know like to so to kind of grow up watching those bands and those musicians to then get in an opportunity to play on play on stage with them or play with them singers in those bands mate it was it, it's living the dream literally I, i'm living my best life i can't i can't you know talk highly enough about it yeah yeah it, it is an amazing uh, i know exactly the vhs uh tape you're talking about the town and country club one and, yes uh, I lent it. I lent it to one of my friends, and you ain't uh, got it back, have you? I've never got it back. <laughs> so if he's listening, I'm gonna get it back, mate. You know, and uh, yeah. because it was a fantastic. I know. I know exactly what you mean by watching that because it had literally everyone on, didn't it? You know, it had. Uh, it anemi- had anemi- everyone. Yeah, anemica. I remember anemica coming yeah. on. A- Apache Indian was on it. That's it. Sangeeta and yeah. Koji Bamra done his percussion solo at the start. Uh, and I met Kuljit Bamra last year for the first time ever. And I had to say to him, I was like, Uncle, like, you know, this is before going back. I must have only been one or two years old. But just growing up with that, and I say to him, Uncle, like, I still remember that percussion solo you did. And it was amazing. Like, he was playing double with one hand. He was playing double up with the other hand. I was like, whoa, what's going on over here? And, yeah. you know, it's it was, that was a golden era of, of, of that kind of UK Bangladesh. So I was very lucky to kind of, grow up in the 90s where it was you know the uk scene was firing and growing up with 80s and 90s music and it's good like you know that there's a de- there's still a demand for live music uh, it's obviously not as anywhere near as it was um, but mm. i think that can be rectified if the right people make the right decisions or yeah. you know and it, a lot of it you know i think tobsy body touched on it very well in his podcast um and obviously he knows a hell of a lot more than me but it did come to a point where, you know, I think singers are pricing themselves at the game. Uh, and it was a case of our DJ Garla Neon and Sarah and the Garden and one of those kinds. Of things. And, you know, and I think it's a bit of a shame because even now, when, you know, even if I go to a wedding as a, like a guest, which is a very rare occurrence, but, and there's a live band, that feel of live mm-hmm. music, you can't, you can't replicate live music no. being played anywhere, whether it's at a midnight, a wedding, at a gig, anything like that. You can't, that feel, you cannot replicate. And for me, that's the addiction, like, you know, being on stage and doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've spoken to a few people that are in bands and uh, there's a moment, right, in a, in a band, everyone has it, where they're playing a song and, and there's a feeling amongst the band members and you know you're killing it. Yeah, there's a vibe in there. The, the singer's yeah. on key. Uh, everyone's tight the stops are coming in yeah. at the right time and it's such a beautiful feeling it's hard to explain it, to people it, it's awesome because it's you know what it's not even even when you're not just doing really well and you're having a really good show sometimes the best laugh on stage is when someone's making a mistake or someone's yeah. made a mistake or and you know that's just the, the camaraderie between kind of your band and realistically when you go to a gig you know it's like you'll know this like you'll probably only be on stage for a fraction of the time that you're going to spend with that band, mm. the traveling, you know, the, the kind of loading, the setting up, the packing away, the sound check, and then the kind of waiting in between. And then the actual performance time is actually probably the smallest fraction of that because, you know, when you base it around everything else. And so it's, it's awesome when you've got a band of, of better than kind of being great musicians, but being great guys. And that's, yeah. that's the, the, that's the real camaraderie. You know, I can play on stage with some amazing musicians, but sometimes if you don't have that, that click with them or that chemistry, or, you know, maybe have a play together as often, it's, it's great. It, for, like, it's a great experience for me, but you don't bounce off each other as much. Whereas if you're in a gelled band or you're with people that you may just get on with a lot, yeah. um, 
you know, and you might not even play with them on stage. Often when you jump on stage and then you kind of, you're vibing together. It's like, yeah. mate, it's, it's the addiction. And I, I remember Ben, but then one day, honestly, like, yeah. I was very, very young. And I think I did actually, I did South or Midla, I think I saw you guys perform. Wow. And I remember the poster uh, and I think it was your album poster. I can't remember the album now, um, but I'm going kind of, this is kind of the ninth. 95 96 maybe around then and I, I remember i remember the poster of you guys performing at south or miller yeah, yeah. great south or park great venues mate <laughs> great i was well, gonna this is it like yeah <laughs> there was pack, it, south then, was a massive medley man it yeah. was it was so it was it, it was so buzzing and uh, it, it's a hard one because it been in the band i mean we're, we're still friends now we don't play in a band yeah. anymore but we're just well funnily enough, i heard your podcast the, the original you know the one you did um with the band of the monday and you can tell that you guys have just picked up from where you left off because that that banter that the the buzz and the, the kind of jokes are still there and i think that's the best that's the best thing about it, that's yeah. the beauty about it. I, I was going to start a podcast about uh van stories because anyone oh, who's wow. in a band knows about van stories right <laughs> yeah i think what happens on on the gig stays on the gig with most yeah. of them so i, I, I don't I, think you'd get a lot out of a lot of people no and it, 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 that was soon cut off and i made this instead right a bit yeah. more but look Stephen, for yourself let's start from the beginning mate uh you're you're from the midlands obviously yeah, and yeah. uh Birmingham, heart, born and bred born and bred and uh so how, how did you start in music have you got your family into music or is there something you picked yeah up? i mean it's 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 it, it, it's a story uh like probably like any other but just before i start i love your background you've got junkila there you know you've got some big singers man there at the yeah. back and i quite quite enjoy that yeah 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 uh, yeah, very good, cool, very there, yeah. Bungie, Bungie, yeah, 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 yeah. She was yeah. quite big in the UK, right? But nope. yeah, no, with me, it was a case of I was born into like a, a family where there was just a lot of music being played at the time, and and you know, my dial was a singer that way back in the day. Uh, I'm talking about seventies, eighties, uh, and he sang for a band called A Star the Group, mm. and it was a it was a band and they, they, at that time, there was the Anadi Sangeet party, a junky group. And, you know, so they, they were the only kind of few bands in, in, in Birmingham at that time. I mean, he stopped singing well, well before I was born. Um, and I think he probably stopped as the bands got a bit bigger kind of thing. But, you know, that kind of carried forward. And then, you know, we lived in a big house with my thai, thai and, you know, their kids. And then, you know, my mom and dad, my grandparents, we all lived in one house. Um, and so just growing up, was there was always music being played uh you know around the house like because my cousins were a lot older than me so they were listening to the latest cassettes and you know Midas Touch and this and that and Dollar Holics which is a bit later but you know just to name a few but mm. um they were always listening to the latest cassettes uh, we always had musical instruments around the house because obviously Mataya used to sing and he played Bajja and Dumbi and stuff and my dad used to play Dol and Tolki and mm. um, so growing up my fascination was just at all like yeah it was an it was an obsession of yeah. like you know it was an obsession with playing the doll um probably like you know uh, there's a lot of doll players out there and it's probably the same and yeah. it was just a, a pure obsession with playing the doll and i think the biggest person to fuel my obsession was going back to that town and country club concert was uh you know the king christian mal yeah um, oh, yeah. So Uncle Jiga Janwal, who later on became my teacher, who, you, oh, you know, wow. I'm very thankful for. And, oops, dropped my headphone. Mm. Uh, and without him, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you. Um, yeah. But from a very young age, I was, uh, I was, you know, pot, pots and pans rattling them. And, you know, my toys were pots and pans and like, you know, toy drum kits and stuff. And, yeah. you know, some people like cars and trucks, and, but mine was all musical instruments. And it just kind of, kind of grew and then you know my dad noticed that I you know I had that kind of passion inside me and my dad actually used to learn from uh, Sikshinda Shindabaji wow yeah. yeah back in the day right mm -hmm. uh, when Shindabaji used to teach um, and then I have a very vague memory of going to like Shindabaji's lesson with my dad and my dad was like okay um, and Shindabaji made me play doll and I like you know obviously I've never learned but I played kind of a couple of beats and Shindabaji was quite you know I I impressed like you know for someone who was what three four years old um, yeah you know and like uh, luckily for me that's a kind of lasting memory and then it kind of grew from there and then my dad took me to um Sadia Staji Kachan my uncle 
uh, and and from a very young age like it was amazing I was learning how to play the ball I was performing and it was just it was incredible man it was mm. you know and I, like looking back and we performed at some big big shows like and yeah. those kind of shows perhaps don't happen as much anymore mm. but you know what we performed in the NIA the NEC the Wembley Arena um, like big big stages and like you don't obviously appreciate it when you're that young no no but looking back now and you think shit like I've played on them stages you know and it's, it's it's great for me and obviously you know nothing would have happened without you know obviously my parents um but you know good john my uncle uh, yeah. and the door blasters that was uh that was our door team and team, you know yeah, we, yeah. we went up and down the country and we never but, got paid yeah. it was never about money no it was never and uh we've got john and Marl as well he He's, he's such an iconic character oh. and amount, the amount of times I've met him we used to sometimes bump into up and I said you see and uh, where yeah, I, course, I, yeah. I used to be in a Jugunu Pangara group uh, back in the oh, day okay, okay, right? okay. so we used to bump into a lot of weddings right and uh, right. Um, so you a bit of a dancer then so, or I, I used singing to do the, or no, singing I used to do the bullying Oh, yeah so right and uh i took it easy i wasn't uh, fit enough to be dancing it's hard work right <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, but he, mate, i'd I rather mean, make him dance oh no i mean Gurjan Mal, every time you meet him he's always on his a game isn't he he's oh. always happy he's always uh energetic he's always professional and uh he's got that buzz and energy and aura about him you know and uh it's I, it's the aura it's you know being in like his presence he's always smiling like the energy that he kind of radio yeah. radiates off to people it's very infectious yeah um you know and as a little kid like i was starstruck like yeah these people who i've only seen on tv they're actually real life people and they exist and like you know i was going to the lessons every week you know and yeah it was it was absolutely amazing like you know and but Gadan my uncle himself was just such is such an amazing guy like what he's done for kind of Bangladesh in the UK you know it, it, it's a map yeah you know up was the, one of the first bands of the kind of that that era that had doll and you know up it will always be kind of one of my all-time favorite oh, bands um, same here I mean you know right. a big part of that was my obsession with Gajan Uncle yeah I, I was I was obsessed with uh, Sada, Sadara Gil oh that was Sadara Uncle they're absolutely the, amazing all I of just, them I just loved his voice and, and Kalawant Bombada as well you know I did I mean together they were amazing you've got a bassy voice and, and, and a yeah they complemented each other very well I know it right was, and for me I think Aparasangit always kind of I was a lot close in terms of I loved them so much because growing up they were probably one of the more dissy bands yeah because they had the doll and they dance you know they were in Pangana costumes so like that's when when I kind of seen seeing them and then obviously in the 80s they had all the shiny stuff and you know they they done some of the kind of more of the western stuff but when I was growing up it was they were always one of the more dissy bands and yeah and for me like that was kind of that was my attraction with it and you know all of them are like for them for now to know you know to to know them really well yeah. to have played on stage with them and like you know just you know it, it's amazing because Sadara uncle like you know he's like Karda Banda like you know yeah. I've known him well his his son we played all together for door blasters so wow. uncle was always coming and because they're all from the same crew like the same area like my dad knows them very well you know and, and then Bomra uncle like he's he's great whenever we see each other we always have a joke and a laugh and you know the whole band like even back to Nikki Patel Ajinda Kalsi like uh, Ajinda yeah. Kang sorry and then Kalsi uncle they were they were special man and then yeah. even when the the band kind of then took a different kind of route and Dips came on and Jatinda came on the drums and, and Kaka uncle came on keyboards it was you were special man I'm yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're special. special group and uh I was actually at Dipsy's first show ever in Gravesend. It was oh, in Gra wow. Yeah, wow, it was in wow, Gravesend. Wow. And uh, I always remind him of that. He's a young kid. And, you know, he was saying he used to be nervous playing with him because obviously it's up and up and eat, you know, and they're, they're famous up and up and eat. Even though it's his dad, you know, he goes, I used to be really nervous. And he goes, if I used to mess up, Sadara would give him a look. There's a look that Sadara would like, basically, <laughs> you messed up yeah. here. But I mean, well, this is, the, I think he's given me that look a couple of times as well, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> they're pros, ain't they? So professionals, nice. man. And uh, pros, they can do it right. And uh, it's just, it was amazing. Like, 
you know, being at such a young age, being in contact and, and kind of close proximity with those kind of singers, you know, and then the other Birmingham singers, you got Shin Uncle and, you know, like the more, the less, I, the more I say about him, the, it's, you know, the guys are absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know? and, it, and, you know, it, it kind of, it's a testament to them that be, because of them, this is why me and you are sitting here, really. And well, this, this is it, man. You know, and it's a pure respect to them. They, they, they yeah. laid the foundations. Even a podcast, which is, uh, you know, I talk about all different types of things, but yeah. ultimately, it's because of them guys. I got into music. I got into sort of entertainment and then radio. It's because of that music and people like Sadara and Shin DCS. It's because of them. They're yeah. my heroes. You know. And, and, well, uh, this is it, uh, 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 and it was. It's just it's amazing to kind of know them now and, and, and perform on stage with them. But then growing up, like listening to their music, it was, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy time. It was, a, I'm just I'm so glad I was alive in that cassette time. Yeah. And, you know, we used to listen back any doll roles and like, you know, obviously then I just learned extensively under Gatan Marlon Cullen, any doll roles that we used to hear. So, you know, for example, anything that knew that come out on cassettes, Shindabadi, like Shindabadi was the kind of king of doll intros, right? Cause he'd bloody played half of them, right? On, yeah. the, on all the <laughs> yeah. recordings and just kind of listening to it back. It was, it was amazing. And then some of us, um, uh, we used to get old Walkman, like, sorry, the old batteries and put them in the Walkman because it used to slow the recording down, right? Mm. And so right. you used to be able to pick it up a lot more. And oh, yeah. Oh, it was oh, crazy. Mean, okay. like, oh, I'm one of the kind of ones that was the inlay reader and like, I was a nerd. I was like, okay, yeah, this person's played this. And although I never knew them, who they were, because I was obviously a young kid. Oh, yeah, this person's played this, this plays. It was recorded here. And like, I love the inlays. Like, that was, yeah, you know, that was amazing. And so when you kind of fast forward and you're on stage with those people. It's like, oh yeah, you played on this album, right? At this studio. And they look at me like, are you all right there? Like you're yeah. kind of, you're a bit too young to be knowing this. And I was like, but no, like that's what I used to read. Yeah. Like, you know, like for example, Sunil Galyan, the guy's amazing. I just used to, long time, I just used to see his name on cassettes. Yeah. Question recorded by Sunil. Just Sunil, yeah. and I was like, ah, right now, it's, it's yeah. Clicks, I, I, so I, I can tell that you know you're you're uh, obviously a big big fan of the music, and you're yeah. very, and you got not you're knowledgeable about it, you know. And uh, it reminds me of myself because I used to look at cassette inlays, and I used to yeah. see Tub, Tubsy's name on there all the time, oh, everywhere. Yeah, it was Tubsy, it. yeah, right. Uh, Pindo's on there, right? And, and I, I sort of take a look yeah. out of him now, and I said, every, every bloody inlay you was in, because I kind of know, and it, and sometimes I have to take a step back, and when we talk. And yeah. I, I, I think, oh, yeah, you know, this is Tubsy, man. You know, this is guy was uh, someone I looked up to and I didn't yeah, even play the dorky. Yeah, yeah. It was not even my, I didn't, you know, I didn't but, have that interest. Yeah, it's but just it's, that respect, right? Yeah, I mean, Dorla, love it, Dorla, love it, that it, intro. I mean, it, Man, legendary, isn't it? It's one, just, of the, one of the most famous it's, intros it's legendary ever. legendary and like, and the, exactly like, and you know, then when you kind of get to meet the guy and, you know, like Tubsy, like, Buddy was prime example of that town and country club. He was playing for Malkit, uh, Malkit Singh on court at that, at that gig. And some of the stuff he was playing at that time was just yeah. amazing. Like, you know, some of the intros they played. Um, it's all on YouTube, by the way. So if you do go back and watch it, a lot, of, a lot, of, that, I'm gonna, a lot yeah. of that's on, on YouTube. And like, I'll, I will go back and watch it every now and again. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, so those kind of people, like, we're just just immense and like you know then to be playing fast forward like you know god knows how many years playing in a band alongside him you know as part of his kind of percussion team quartet you know um oh, it's, it's it's amazing like yeah. oh, i was and shit scared yeah i can imagine yeah of course it, it, I, I, to be honest when i interviewed him the first time i was quite nervous and i'd interviewed yeah. loads of people before him but it, I, for me yeah. sometimes when i meet these people uh because i kind of I look up to him even now. I've become a kid again. This and that's what it, happens. Right? Yeah. Right? This is it. This is it. This is the main thing. You become a kid again. I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah. And uh, I've, I, I'm you got back, back to that fan. You go back to that fan boy like that you were or that, us, that we, we, we still are really. I, I, I was doing an interview the other day with someone and uh, in the middle of it, I got an email. You know, it pops up, doesn't it, on your screen. And uh, it was yeah, Shin yeah, yeah. from DCS. Wow. And uh, I'm trying to get him on the show, obviously, right? And uh, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I was doing this interview while I was typing into shit because I didn't want to lose him. I thought, I've got him now. I've got him now. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. He's, on, he's on his computer. He's on his phone. On, so yeah, fingers yeah, crossed, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get him on. Oh, um, wow. that'd be awesome. Like, the guy's absolutely amazing. Like, DCS are, again, one of my all-time favourite bands. I think that 
there was a point where they were the musicians band. Like if you're a musician, oh, you wanted yeah. to play for DCS because they were tight. Uh, you know, they just did things differently. They could take a song like a cover and just DCS it up. Like I can't even think of a better word. And, yeah. you know, their percussion breaks, they used to play off breaks and in breaks and amazing, amazing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then I got the chance to play for the DCS band, like, you wow. know, and Shin Uncle, like I, he probably hates me calling me calling him uncle, but he is obviously he's, he's He's of that age and he doesn't look it and he's kind of, he, he's very young at heart as well. And, uh, you know, to get that call to go and play for DCS, mm. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I was like, I, you know, and then Shin Uncle calls me like, can you come and do this gig for us? And I went abroad with them. I mean, when I say abroad, we went to Belfast, but I'll yeah. count that. It all counts, right? <laughs> it all counts, man. And uh, I don't know if um, you... Right, and yeah, it was just, you know, uh, I've done a few gigs from it's amazing, man. Yeah, I mean, what a great band. They they were the musicians' band. You're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. live, they were absolutely fantastic. Oh. And there is a story, I don't know if you've heard it, and if you have, I'm going to stop. It's... We, we it was a Saturday morning. You've heard the story, right? Okay. And, uh, was that when they lost their instruments? They lost their instruments. I tell everyone this story, right? And uh, they had to use our instruments. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. we gave it we gave them the instruments. We somehow got a guitar off a guy off a road, literally a man walking down yeah, the road. Yeah, I, I, I heard that the, the DCS boys have actually told me this story as well. Like I've heard it on your podcast, I think a couple of times. And they've also mentioned it. Like they were like, oh yeah, remember when it happened and we have to go to Gravesend and you know, they must've been in Europe or something. Yeah, so they were they at a wedding. They guitar off the guy in the road. It's a guy walking down the road. We needed a guitar, right? And uh, yeah, that guitar yeah, player was yeah. from Hitch, uh, Hitchin, I think he lived in. Oh. And uh, it was Harrow, Harrow Hitchin. And he's so far away mm. from Gravesend. Anyway, this guy said, yeah, you can borrow my guitar. And he's stayed at the wedding having a few pints. And uh, I that, bet he that, did in the much they, you've got it, innit? They exactly they were they were amazing and we were just thinking God our instruments uh, don't usually sound like that when we do it. Well, this is it. Like you know, like I can give my door to Tubsy Buddy and say, look, Buddy, can you just uh, or, or if he's messing around and he just comes and you know starts playing on my door and I think, wow, well, wow, like it's the same key, the door's tuned, it's the same exactly before, but it don't sound the same now. Yeah, and and, like, and, you know I mean? and to thank, uh, we we said to them afterwards, look, you're gonna have to come for a drink with us as well. And they just come back from Helsinki, I think, so they wanted to get home, but because they had to kind of say thank you to us, <laughs> which oh, I yeah, had, yeah. had well, to take. Well, they're not one to turn down and drink the DCS, no, place, so but I think they that. had enough that day because they were a bit stressed. But well, uh, well, at the well, end, I remember yeah. Shin was in my local, right? So well. Shin DCS, and I was so proud. I thought I brought we've brought Shin DCS to our local Actually, pub, yeah. right? Is it up and up pub as well, right? So yeah, yeah, people yeah. Knew, but, buzzing, yeah. great stories. I mean, that's, the, that's why the industry at that time was slightly different, right? Than it is now. Yeah. yeah? That camaraderie. Much different because yeah. I think there was, there was a camaraderie, camaraderie between the bands, but also kind of what I seen um, that singers had a lot of respect for each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, they would, you know, they'd get, they'd go sometimes, they travel together if they're in the middle, or, you know, everyone's performing down south. The singers would often go together and think, you know what, Tiki and Ale will have a joke and a laugh, right? And, you know, they get changed in the same dressing room. And like now, like I see some singers and they don't even want to like be next to each other and they're like, no, no, we stay here and like we travel. They could live on the same road, they could live next to each other, but they will travel down in separate cars because they, you know, they, it's all about maybe their the, the image they're trying the to image. portray. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different. It's a. It's, you're right. It's a, it's a completely different time now. Yeah, and uh... but I'm I'm lucky. I saw that. You know, oh. a bit of that time as well. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely. I always say I wish I was older because I would have gone to the daytimes. I kind of went to a daytime because obviously I was too too young, right? Yeah. But I think my education would have gone down the drain. Um, yeah, I, I mean, would have just lived at daytimers. Daytimers were something else, honestly. And yeah. uh, PDM actually played at a daytimer once as well. And uh, I, think oh, yeah. was, I think it was with DCS actually saying that. And uh, okay. and the promoter got to. Um, he knew I was friend. I wasn't in the band that time, and he asked right. me to sing the promoter. It's the first time I sang with PDM, right? And I think okay. I sang a, I think I sang a DCS song, knowing that DCS right, were there, okay. who were going to sing it after me. That, that is certainly brave, I must say. That was brave. <laughs> it was the only song I knew, but uh, I, but it was just a fantastic feeling. And that, daytimes were something else, mate. Uh, but I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. This is what I was talking to Tubsy about. You see, um, I. I don't know if we'll get back to that stage with the live scene yeah, because, you know, it's a, it's a difficult one because there's so many bands, you know, your dad was in a band. There was, there was, I mean, hundreds of bands in the country, you know, that's out down South there as was, well. Yeah, there, 
there were so many bands and like even now like if you're on facebook you'll come across bands that you know you never heard of like you know and they were just and they all had their kind of little time and the little moment and to be honest yeah i think it's realistically i think it's a bit tough to get back to that golden era mm. um but i think you know what there's there's still a demand for it and i think you know what there, there are still musicians um that want to kind of play live and you know people like myself young musicians and you know uh people that are kind of still learning instruments and you know and again i just kind of recommend it to anyone because it's that feeling on stage and it teaches you a lot as well it's not just about the music it's about spending time with people uh, you know i was often i was always the youngest like even now i think i'm one of the youngest and i think it probably made me a bit more mature than like my age kind of thing as, as especially as a very young kid when i was going with door blasters Mm. I was, I was literally, I was the youngest. Mm. Everyone was older than me, um, you know. So it, it taught me a lot in that respect. And you know, like it, it's good. It's a good life experience to have. Like if you people that don't know it won't miss it. But like now that I've experienced it and I am experiencing it, I just I can't imagine what my life would be kind of without music in general, not just the performing side, just without music because it takes up you know a lot of my kind of time yeah, interest it, and it's, it's, it's too late now Stephen. you're that's it you've got the bug and unfortunately mate, that's it. I, I think i get the bug until the day i die mate yeah. it'll, it'll still be tapping somewhere somewhere or another yeah you know but that was the beauty with, with good john uncle as well sorry to kind of cut you but no, no, no. it was we grew up with that that band era but what we learned from good john uncle when we were learning instruments we got we got to a proper foundation of what the tool is right um what the ball of the door like the notation of the door you know you should be able to say everything that you play mm. right and we were taught the technical side of of door uh you know the, the more the classical bhangra folk style mm. beats and that was my passion like that side you know i was very lucky that i loved both sides equally like the, the kind of the band playing although at that time i wasn't doing it but the kind of folk side of door uh, and you know, hence then I kind of went on and and played for very lucky enough to play for my favourite Bangra team, which is Nachas and Sar. And yeah. you know, I'm still a, I'm still a member of the, them. And for me, that folk side really then came out from Gajan Uncle because there was everything in that. There was kind of you know the, the folk style at all. And then you used to see the Bangra dancers on stage, and then you'd see Algodje, you'd see Tumbia, you'd see Golinga, like you'd see what it was actually meant to be like in kind of Punjab and stuff and how the UK guys have done that here and try to still keep that kind of art alive of kind of, you know, the Punjabi folk music and Punjabi kind of folk dance. Yeah. I mean, Nacho does a legendary group, um, you know. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's an honor for me to play with them. I, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a great, like I play with them and I've been with them for about 12 or 13 years now. Wow. Um, yeah. 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 And as a, again, as a young kid, I used to watch them on stage and be like, wow. And, you know, because obviously they were both managed by Gajan Uncle and we used to do a lot of performances together. Um, for then me to kind of, I always wanted to join Natchez and Saad. Like it was a goal. I was like, I've got a goal play with Natchez and Saad. And I was lucky enough to join. Uh, and, you know, like I, I do a multitude of stuff on stage with them now. I play Dool, I play Dumbi, I sing, I play Dolki, I play Bugju, I play kind of, you know, variety. I play Bajan stage with them as well. So it's, it's, um, it's good. I get to live the dream with them. And it's, you know, it's, it's keeping that folk side, hopefully the, the folk art of kind of the Punjabi dance alive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Juggernaut myself, that's what made me travel around the world yeah, yeah, yeah. and place venues I've never sung this at. I actually sung at Millwall Football Ground. Oh, yeah, yeah right. so yeah, that's where that's where Bangada can take you to Millwall football yeah, ground. Right? It, it takes you to some of the most remote remote places, like you know, uh, places that you never imagine performing at, especially no. Natchez and Sar and stuff, because you could be doing the most remote Gorianda folk festival and there's not an Indian in sight, but as soon as you start playing ball and as soon as they see the Bangada and how energetic and colourful and, and kind of loud and powerful, you get how much more sometimes love from them as you yeah. would than you would when you just had a normal Punjabi wedding. Yeah, yeah, they're some right, of the best. You know, they're the just the Pagari, yeah. they're stick English them on when stick them on when people are eating roti. So just to pass yeah, the time, I pass the time. But the, Eng the English medley were the best, I think. Mate, they were, they were, they were the best. Awesome, were yeah, awesome. And, and you know what, Natural Sard have played at some of the biggest ones, um, and it's been amazing. But even from the biggest to the smallest. You just seem to get so much love, and there's people, there's festivals that will call you every year. 
Mm -hmm. right uh, and they can see the same thing every year although we do try and change it up sometimes yeah. but they can see they're happy to see the same thing every year because yeah. it's to them it's just so com something completely removed from yeah. what they're kind of used to seeing right yeah. so it's, oh, i mean it's, it's i mean good. it's loud it's colorful it's energetic yeah. you know what's not to yeah. love about it right and then you get them involved at the end and we you know we always do kind of like an audience interaction audience yeah, participation yeah. And, and they love it man they 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 love it like they, you know, they're there and doing their, you know, uh, they're just, they're getting involved and, and that, that was, it, it's awesome to see, man. Yeah. Power of Pangara. Yeah, oh, definitely, speak. without doubt. And so for yourself, you know, you you, you use learning at all with Gurdjian and Marla and... Uh, still learning, still learning. And, uh, okay, still learning as as we always, we're always learning. Still learning. And uh, yeah. so was there, a, were you always uh, uh, trying to sing as well or was that just something that sort of picked up slowly? Yeah. Yeah, no, I wasn't like, uh, I'm going to be straight. Like, I never, ever thought of becoming a singer. Like, it wasn't something I wanted to do. I just wanted to play for a band. That was it. You know, I wanted to make music and play for a band. Like, be the be the people that I watched on growing up. Do you know what I mean? Because I just wanted to be in that environment. And, you know, and then I wanted to play for a Bangra team. So, you know, I played for Nachas Asad. Um, the singing, I'll tell you straight, it, it was a complete accident. Like growing up, I listened to a lot of music and, you know, I listened to a lot of lyrics, uh, you know, and kind of a lot of, a lot of probably a large part of my Punjabi was kind of, you know, learned by listening to lyrics and asking yeah. my parents, so, yeah. like, you know, and stuff. And, and so I used to retain a lot of lyrics um, in terms of, because I used to listen out for lyrics rather than just the beat or just the music. I tried to listen to all of it in its kind of entirety. And uh, then I was always singing at home, you know, messing around, like, as you do bathroom shits, bathroom singers and yeah. car singers and shower singers. And I never took it seriously. Like, I hate the sound of my own voice even now. I can't stand it. <laughs> um, and then it just, I think it was Najda Sassar, um, one of our singer, well, our only singer at the time, he had to go to India. He had to went, went, went away for two weeks. And uh, the other side they put a program, right? So they, and these guys have heard me messing around at, at training and practice. And they were like, well, you've got to sing now. Yeah. And I was like, what? And they're like, well, yeah, you've got to do it now. Cause you know, uh, Michelle, who's our singer, he was like, oh, Michelle's gone to India. You got to sing. And I thought, shit, like, how am I going to do this? Like, you know what I mean? And the, my, the first program, the first show I, I sang at was my cousin's wedding. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's even more daunting, right? Yeah. Um, I'd be much happier singing in front of a bunch of strangers because if it doesn't go well, you just disappear and people ain't yeah. gonna see you again. Yeah. And it was Matthias' son's wedding. <sighs> Man, and they didn't know, so I kept it a secret because I was shitting it, right? Kept it a secret, so they booked obviously Natchez and Saad and I've done the walking on Dool and yeah, great. And then um, we've come to do the performance and I've gone upstage and I've started playing they think oh yeah that's fine this is bringing me saying don't be and then i've just stayed on the mic and they're like thinking well what's going on here and then started singing they were their faces dropped um <laughs> and they were just in shock because no one had seen me sing like you know i've yeah. never never sang you know you mess around a little bit at uni or, or whatever right um but never sang on stage and it was yeah it was it was madness it was it, i'm sure it was absolutely awful in fact it was awful <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, zero training, zero, you know, uh, anything. I had no idea or, of, of key or, you know, anything like that of pitch or tone. I just let it out, right? And uh, they loved it. Um, I think they're a bit biased, right? But, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, and I listened to the film and I thought, oh my God, what have I done? That sounds absolutely, I was cringing. You know, I hate, I hate my own voice. I cringe at my own voice, right? And then, uh, yeah, that was it. And then I, I broke my wrist. Um, we'll not get into that, but it was a, it was a sports injury. Broke my wrist, and uh, then I just because I, I wasn't used to sitting at home, I was like, "Well, I'm going to sit at home at the weekend." I was like, "I'm going to go and do ball." What used to happen? Then I started obviously a little practicing and stuff at, at training actively, and then uh, me and like the, the the singer, we used to you know sing. The, the show and then he used to take the first half, I used to take the second half. And so my confidence started growing and I started, you know, slightly understanding stuff a bit more um, to the point where I started getting some good feedback. I'm like, you know, you know, you're really good. Like, you know, why don't you look at releasing a song? And I was like, what, really? I was like, I need to learn how to sing first. 
And then there was a point where I thought, right, if I want to kind of give this a go, I need to start learning. Yeah. Um, because for me, like I, I'd been used to an environment where you learn an instrument. Like, you know, when I was learning Thumbi, I, I learned Thumbi, right? And so anything else I was used to learning, any instrument, I played drums, I learned at school, right? So I was, for me, self-taught, it will only tell, take you so far. Yeah. Um, and to get that grounding and get that the basic foundation, you have to go to someone who's knowledgeable enough. Yeah. Um, so then I was put in touch with my astad, uh, who who uh, teaches me singing, uh, Purpul Singh Sol, um, Doctor Purpul Singh Sol. He's the guy. Body is amazing, right? He's not actually, you know, he's, he's not actually old. Like he's he's a, quite a young guy, but he learns from uh, Astadji Matlashiji, um, Ajiti yeah. Matlashiji. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if you kind of if you know their name, you kind of know what they're about. And yeah. you know, like he's good by with section the Shindabaji, Shin, Jazz yeah. Dummy, you know, Juggy Rihal, you know, all these guys, it they, they're part of that same clique, man. That's their mm. clique. Mm. And so I was really fortunate to kind of be put in touch with them. And I was shitting it, man, when I first went. Like, I'd met him once before. Uh, I think I sang a little bit in front of him as, as well. I think he came to one of our, the Nachos and our Christmas parties. He was quite close to the kind of team. And then, uh, a f- you know, a few months, must have been a good few months later, and then I approached him and he goes, all right, he goes, come to my house. And he just wanted to get a feel for me and and who I was and if he liked me or, you know, what I, what I was about and stuff. And went to his house and I have to tell you something, I was shitting myself. Yeah. Like there's certain people, I'm quite a confident person, I'm not really scared of anyone or anything, but certain people in your life who you kind of respect or you're in awe of, oh man, like then it's, you know, as you probably know, right? It's just mm. a bit like what's going on. And then I sat there and, um, you know, I took my bhajan, you know, he goes, yeah, this is, this, this, this. Um, and he gave me some exercises and he goes, right, go away and kind of come back and show me what you've done. And so I'm practicing really hard and, uh, and again, even now, like, you know, I've been learning um, f- uh, with body for about eight years. Wow. I still get nervous in front of him. So like, yeah. I can nail something at home and I can nail it where I think, you know, oh, oh, this sounds really good. And as soon as I sit in front of him, oh, I forget. And then my keys go wrong, but, you know, like I'll forget stuff. And, you know, and I just think, I always say, buddy, it's always your fault. Like I sound much better at home. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so he just wanted to kind of see what I was about. And, and thankfully, he kind of, you know, agreed to teach me. And he doesn't teach, he's not openly, he doesn't openly teach people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like he has to get a feel of you and, and yeah, yeah. to see if he likes you. And, you I know, think, from. I think from, or, or from what you've told me, what shocked me the most is the length of time you've now been training to sing. So, this is not like yeah. someone who sings like in the bathroom and. Uh, with his mates in the pub or whatever and thinks, you know what, I can watch in a video, uh, music video, think, yeah. I'm going to do that, you know, I'm going to do that and uh, just puts out a song. That was quite, that was a bit like me, really. That was my style, right? And uh, so for you, that's a long length of time to be training. You're still training, obviously, because you never stop learning yeah, singing yeah. Uh, or you any instrument. Um, but you've never, you haven't rushed it, have you? You know, you could have done this yeah. five years I ago. Think I was, or two, you're right, I was... I was in very good hands. I mean, before I went to Pura Body and stuff, I actually had people phoning me saying, oh, we want to do a track, let's do a track and stuff. And and I was like, no, I was like, I can't sing. I was, you know, I understood that. And I was like, I can't sing, right? Um, yeah, I can do one half of the Nachas Asad Bolia, which I know like the back of my hand and I've kind of practiced them in and out. And, you know, you might think they sound okay, but I can't sing. I, I don't have a clue. And, you know, what singing is, and that's when I kind of, I went to Bali and we learned Indian classical music, you know, and I am not an Indian classical singer, you know, by any means. Like I love, I'm, you know, very folk and this, like I love that. Yeah. But I understand the grounding that I need to have for me to be able to do what I want to do. And but I was in, always in good hands with Bali. He was always, you know, he, I didn't do any. I always said to Bali, I was like, I'm not going to do anything until you tell me I'm ready. Um, and so that's, I didn't, uh, and mm. I learned. And, you know, we have a good click. There's only three of us, um, you know, three or four of us now that learn. Me, Banga, who's obviously, he was, he was an established singer. Mm. Uh, and uh, our, our other brother, Suk Jita, who's a very, very good singer as well. Mm. Uh, and Tubbsy's son now, Amrit Paul, he learns with us. And, you know, he's just started learning and, you know, he's picking up the ropes. But it was always 
being in good hands and trusting the person that you're learning from. Like you have to have that bond. You have to have that yeah. trust. And he would never let me go astray. And out of respect for him, I would only do things when, you know, when he's, he, when he was ready for me to kind of do stuff. And yes. then he came to the point was like, okay, right. Start looking at doing stuff. And then I was like, Oh shit, what do I do now? Yeah. All oh, right. So he's now given you the, the green light, the go ahead. You're, you're ready now, <laughs> Stephen. And well, yeah, don't, I think don't show me up. Right? Don't, don't show me up. You're ready now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is it. I mean, he's going to, when he listens to this, he's going to hate me because he doesn't call himself an star at all. He goes, I'm not a teacher. He goes, I have a great teacher. Uh, and he goes, you know, I can only, you know, teach you what I know. And, you know, I'm not an star. Don't call me an star. He goes, I'm just your big brother. Right. But I think a little bit, I do a little bit to wind him up. But uh, I always, I explained it to him actually, like not long ago. I goes, buddy, like you might not class yourself as an star or a teacher, but for you, everything you've taught us, for us, you are kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and no teacher or no star is, is kind of big or small. Everyone you learn something off is an a star. You know, I, yeah. I listen to singers and I can pick stuff off off them, and they, mm. you know, they, they've taught me something without actually teaching me something. Do you see what I mean? So, all be a star, the look, yeah, like you know, I talk about. A star you call it Marnik, like you know, he's my all time favorite singer. Yeah, the king, man. He's, yeah. you know, he, just the amount of people that call him a star G is because they learn so much off him. And, yeah. you know, anyone you learn something off is, is you know, a highly respectable person. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's interesting. Um, your, your teacher, your star says that because I, I was speaking to um, True School the other day yeah, yeah. and uh i said the same thing to him because a lot a lot of his students obviously call him a star right uh, online yeah. and, and he goes no he goes look man he goes uh you know if you know what true school's like he's quite yeah like open and he goes no i'm not yeah, a teacher cool. i'm not a teacher he goes look they could call me a star but that's like a proper respect word he goes look, yeah. i just teach them and if they want to call me a star that's fine but not you know he doesn't want to have that yeah, label I mean, such. again that that's the mark of him i mean i know suck and he's a, he's, a, he's a top guy and you know i've chilled with him and obviously the guy's obviously like amazing you know a fantastic musician and you know at the top of his game so to speak kind of you know when it comes to music production and he's yeah. a nerd he's a bunger on nerd like yeah and it yeah, was I, good i went to his house and he used to he was like quizzing me on stuff he's like what do you think about this and what do you think about that and then i was like right okay i'll just have to tell you what i feel and like i think luckily we kind of some bits we kind of felt the same and yeah. he, he, it's cool but yeah he's he's on the level and the, the interesting thing about true school about suck is um his teacher um britam and um, britam g is, is, is absolutely amazing is one of the g students wow so yeah. like you know with g like he's, he's influenced a lot of people and the stuff. industry and the whole so industry, realistically think, everyone's yeah. kind of you know come from a certain branch of something you see what i mean amazing that is uh, amazing you know, um I mean, yeah, I like True School. I, I, I get on with oh, him, yeah, and I think he's got, he's almost like a crazy musical genius, isn't he? When I speak to him, because yeah. uh, he, yeah, he's yeah. so knowledgeable, he knows a lot, yeah. and uh, he's got a great sort of he's got a dry sense of humour. Let's put it that way, right? And <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, otherwise people can get offended. I mean, not that he probably cares, but you've got to get his kind of sense of humour, and yeah. it is quite dry. You know, he's he's a proper like. He's a he's a proper punk head, like you know, he's a proper fanatic, and he's oh. one of them. He will know exactly like who's played on this album and what studio, and like a, you know, a certain certain time, three minutes and fifteen seconds, there was this door break, and like you know, he's he's proper into that, and it's it's good, like you know, because yeah, obviously he knows. Yeah, yeah, that that I mean, with their sort of um, they've got their uh, check one records, and what he yeah, yeah, yeah. what he was saying, he wants that vibe from the band era. You know, that's what yeah. he wants back. So that's what he's going to try and produce. Just good music, no uh, over-the-top fanfare of, you know, yeah. uh, superstar sort of. They want good singers, good music, good singles, yeah. good albums. That's what he's planning to do. And for you as well, you're, 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 you're a young singer who's learnt, you've taken your time to learn, and you've got that massive respect for the past. And yeah. that's the kind of... It's kind of as the past that we're here right so yeah and that's what we need we need people like yeah. you and uh to, to because i know if you if you had a single out or an album i couldn't imagine you going on stage doing a pa yeah look the thing is like uh, i will always like you know i've played live my whole life whether it's doll or whether it's any other instrument or or anything and you know like i've, I've done i've played whatever i've done on stage i've 
it's always been live. Like I've been used to the fact of, no, it's got to be live. You've got to get it right. Uh, you know, unfortunately, look, sometimes situations don't, circumstances don't dictate that or situations dictate something differently. And there's, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of singers out there that would rather be singing live. Mm. Um, but, you know, people, People may not may not want to pay for the whole live band, and you know it, it's 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 come down to an audience, uh, and it's about changing the tastes and changing the ears of the musical audience. Right? Yeah. They sometimes just want to see that singer on stage singing that song that he's recorded, and you know, unfortunately, that you know the singers that kind of do it full time, or the singers that kind of they just want to go out there and perform. Mm. You know, it, their hands are tied a little bit as well. As much yeah. as they oh, yeah. might want to sing live, you know, circumstances don't let them and. You know, it's sometimes unfair to say, oh, no, it's just a PA singer because I know a lot of them do want to sing live, um, you know, mm. so it's up to the audience to kind of demand that. And it's, it's creating that demand, I think, uh, of the audience and stuff and and just, you know, training their ears a bit more. Yeah, it's a difficult one because you're right. They For a singer, they, they can either do a, a PA and perform somewhere or not. Yeah. You know, and uh, so a lot yeah, of them yeah, choose yeah. to do it, and which is, you I know, mean, the, 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 you can still get creative around it. You can, I mean, you can try and make your PAs as live as possible. I mean, you know, without having a full band and the kind of PA singers that I've played with, um, you know, they do do that. They will, you know, like they'll sing their own song, but you know, they will make sure they're singing live or doing live bullying or something or playing an instrument on like, on stage because they want to showcase that side of it as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, my a banger is, is, you know, um, a perfect example. Like, you know, a lot of his pro shows are dictated by obviously people just want kind of a PA, but he will go and play Dumbi on stage. He'll go and play Algoji on stage. He will sing live over like a beat, but it's his vocal, like, you know, on, there's no vocal on the beat. It's just him singing live. And, you know, be, singers are, you know, like, unfortunately, sometimes their hands are tied mm. um, by what the audience want and they don't want a full live band. They just want a half an hour set of that singer singing his, you know, mm. a few of his famous songs, you know, whichever singer yeah. it might be. And, and that's it. Go back to the DJ. So, you know, live music, I, I hope it, you know, it's just, I think the right people need to do the right things really and, and kind of go out there and, you know, perform live or, or make their PAs as live as possible, get creative with it. Yeah. I mean, I to be honest, I've started a very negative uh, when I started doing these shows. And since after Tubbsy's yeah. interview, I've got more and more positive because I've met more and more people who are playing live instruments and yeah. have that same mentality as me of let's bring... I don't want to bring back the glory days because I don't think that will ever happen. But I think there needs a bit. Let's do what bit, we can, though. Yeah, exactly. A, a, maybe yeah. a variety in the industry, a yeah. variety of I different mean, things. I, I, like, I, I've, I've got no kind of songs out or anything at the moment. So if ever I do perform, forward, it will always be my first kind of preference to sing live. You can't, you know, if. I've grown up watching live singers like, you know, there was no PAs back then. And, they, uh, you know, whether you go back to kind of the folk legends of Punjab or kind of, you know, the UK Bhangra scene, they all sang live, you know, and like I play with singers now and I see more live performances than PAs because, you know, we're always kind of on the road mm -hmm. and stuff. But so my preference is always play live because that's what I've kind of been brought up and doing yeah. and, you know, all my life really. So yeah. that will be it. So you, you said, you know, you haven't got a single out at the moment or a song. Are you yeah. in, are you planning? Are you making it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's coming. Um, there, there are kind of a few singles um, in the mix and, and, you know, almost pretty much finished. Um, uh, COVID-19 COVID actually kind of, you know, it halted some of the progress because yeah. uh, there was meant to be stuff out like right now. Um, if it hadn't have been for kind of the COVID and, you know, I was meant to have shot my videos and stuff and, but all that's kind of taken a hold and to this to point now where I have to kind of plan almost like a plan B now for videos. Okay. Right. What do we do? How do we get around this? But yeah, no, um, there's, there's music uh, coming, uh, hopefully very soon. Like, you know, it's been two, three years in the making and, and stuff and getting stuff ready, getting songs ready, sitting with singers, sitting with writers, sorry, should I say, and finding the right lyrics. And, you know, like the, uh, the track I'm doing now, it's my dream was always to kind of record my own instruments on my song. Um, and so one of the tracks I've done, uh, I've recorded um, 
you know, tol, tol, ki tabla, baja, tumbi, and then obviously I've uh, sang it as well. So we're just wow. kind of tweaking that and, and putting the, because yeah. like people like, you know, growing up, Shinda Baji, like, and yeah, yeah. Omen Hair Baji, like my idols, man, because like, they were all players as well. That's the best thing about it. They were yeah. all players and like, you know, played for Pangara teams and stuff. And uh, and then like Shinda Baji, they, they made music, Omen Hair Baji obviously makes music and they still play on stage. Like Omen Hair Baji will still play keyboard on stage. Like he loves that live kind of element and obviously Shinda Body then started singing and so those kind of people are like my idols because like I want to do what they've done I'll never be able to do it but you know it's just they've inspired me to try and do what little I can kind of thing you see what I mean I mean you can do it in your own way I mean the fact you're going to do that song where you play the instruments you sung the song yeah. I love that that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about that's the kind of thing we need right and I yeah. think that's I think that's brilliant and I'm really looking forward to it and I think for the videos you don't, you, I mean, you need videos these days, but I think, yeah. I think you know, uh, you can get creative somehow and do yeah. it in a different way. It's, you know, you're going to have right. to work around this. Exactly. Yeah. It's just about, you know, it's, it's just about making yourself think differently, uh, make yourself be kind of a bit more creative uh, yeah. about the videos and stuff and, and kind of just seeing what we can do with it. So, yeah, I'm just kind of in the planning stage of the videos and, and stuff. So once the video shot, then hopefully like it'll be a lot closer to kind of yeah, release. Yeah. But um yeah, otherwise like things are kind of pretty much ready. Uh, yeah. songs are pretty much ready. Like I've done another track where, you know, I wanted to play tool on it. I was like, look, can I play tool on it? And you know, uh thankfully like I was allowed and I just let go, like I just gave everything I you know I could on, on uh, and played tool on it. In Planet Studios, I recorded in Planet Studios, yeah. which for me was was massive because I've read about it so much exactly on the yeah. inlays. Yeah. Right, uh, and it's amazing. The first time I think I went to record at Planet Studios, I went to record Dumbi for Amon Hair Buddy, right? So he goes, Look, Stephen, yeah, can you come and record Dumbi? I was like, um, Okay, first of all, Amon Hair's, phone, Amon Hair's phone number is showing up on my phone, and I'm thinking, Shit, have I done something wrong? Like, you know, and then he said, yeah. No, can you come and record Dumbi? I was like, uh, Okay, buddy, that's fine. And I went to Planet Studios and I just went in, and it's like, it's a back end of nowhere. It's a back end of kind of like a quick fit and stuff. And like, you know, what I had in my head of Planet Studios, it wasn't, it, you know, it was completely different. And I went in, I was like, oh, wow, this is, you're just standing in history, really. And you see all the albums there that have been made. Um, you know, it's crazy. And then I, then I recorded it, it recorded the Thumbi on and, uh, for, for Omen Hair Body. And that was awesome. And then with this track I've just done, um, uh, one track that's ready, I've gone and recorded it all there, which is amazing because. You know, you've grown up listening to kind of Shinda Body and Omen Hair and, you know, uh, Tubsies and, and the Juggy Rehals and, you know, all record a planet and the sound that they get is, is absolutely amazing. And then I was able to do that. And for me, it was just, it's a little thing. It's a nerdy thing. But like for me, I checked it off the list. I was like, yeah, man. No, I, it, it's, it, like... it's, it, it's a nerdy thing maybe for other people, but I know exactly what you mean. I, I remember doing, I did a song for my friend uh, Shin Hair, uh, Shin uh, he's uh, yeah, 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 Shin yeah. Hair, right? GC, GC, you know, Shin, Shin Hair, GC, that's yeah, it. Yeah. So I, he's a good friend of mine. So I sung on one of his um, albums, previous albums, and I recorded in uh, Pete Ware's studio and oh, uh, Parrot, Parrot House, right? And um, so I'm working with an engineer who used to works with Hida and all these great bands, right? In the past, you know, um, you know, Ajana, yeah. he's, he's worked with loads of people as well. You know, it's Planet and there was Pete Ware as well, right? There's them too. Sort yeah, of. big up at the Pete Ware. It was massive in the 90s, famous studios. It was huge. Yeah, and just going in the booth and recording my simple vocals on two keys, right? <laughs> and, uh, it was wow. just awe-inspiring. And for me, it was the same as you. It was like a little tick box, a geeky thing. Yeah, I didn't even care if the song came out good anything. at the end. I just thought I've done exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> It doesn't mean anything to anyone apart from you. And you think, yeah, man, like I've done it. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I could tell someone they were like, well, so what? But, so what? Yeah. You know, I think, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've recorded there. Like it's, it's a big deal. So yeah. So no, things are, things are kind of coming along. Um, and things have been halted a bit by COVID-19. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I take it in a bit, I take it as a bit of a blessing in disguise really, because, during that time, it made me kind of look at a few things and, I was, and then I've changed a few things. I like, no, let's try this differently. Let's try this differently. Um, you know, so it's, I think it all happened, uh, you know, it was a bless. Yeah, it happened for good reason um, in terms of kind of, for me, I think it was good because it just enabled me to kind of just look back 
and then listen to something with fresh ears rather than when you're in that zone, you just go, 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 and you just kind of you know, think you've done, yeah, let's go get it, let's do shoot the video and let's get it out. And, and that, that was it, really. So it, it's good. It, it, it's been a productive time, really. Yeah. Um, so hopefully soon, um, you know, there'll, there'll be music coming out. Because yeah. I was always a bit like hesitant. I was like, okay, should I release it now? Or should I release it kind of, you know, when events start, or weddings start? Uh, you know, if, if you're trying to aim songs for kind of that, the dance floor and stuff and there's no dance floors and you know what to do and so but you know so i'm in that bit of a conundrum but i might just think you know what let, let's just get it out there and then yeah, let's just see what happens right like yeah. it's better it's better out than in basically yeah and uh i think it's a great attitude to have Stephen, because uh like you said it was covid19 it's it's you couldn't do anything you couldn't record your videos and you pl- you know yeah, yeah, you build question. up for it you know you, you was excited and you had to stop but it, that's a good attitude to have to think you know i'm going to use this time wisely let's look at the tracks yeah. i've made because I, I spoke to um sunny dincy who makes the videos for like the last oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. i when he came on my show it was just the start of covid and I said, so a lot of your projects must have stopped. He goes, yeah. I go, you look, how do you feel? You must be down. He goes, not really. He goes, I've, I've had a chance for once in my life now to sit down and write some new sort of scenes and new ideas. Well, okay. So he used that time himself yeah. to, uh, to, to write. And he's making a film as well. So he's doing script changes. So he used it as a positive. Yeah. So I'm glad you did as well, you know, and we can't. Yeah, this is it. Like I was meant to fly out to India yeah um to go shoot some videos and you know obviously that never happened and, and I, I can't see it happening for a while but it's it's not the worst thing in the world to happen it just means that i need to get a bit more creative and it just allowed me to kind of look at things slightly differently and, and make the most of that kind of time yeah so look we've we've kind of uh ambled along through your life and you've got to a point now where there's music ready now to be released and uh you're probably itching yeah. to get it out and uh so what would you say your uh time frames are now is it christmas i know it's hard to say but yeah you get you get stung by giving time frames that you yeah. can't deliver right um but <laughs> um the main thing is you know what the main thing is trying to get um a video shot and i'm, I'm yeah. kind of working on that kind of frantically trying to get stuff done um ideally i'd love to say i'd have something out kind of before this year is up yeah and I, I, i'm desperately trying to make that happen because that was the original plan right like i was meant to hopefully i was meant to release something back in june and then you know my second release would have come around about maybe august time um but hopefully um I, i'm trying to get things done uh it's it's tough um you know because again it's it's one of those that when you've got have you know not with a record label or anyone or you you got to do everything yourself and which is good because you learn a hell of a lot um and it's just basically all on you and i work nine to five as well and so Mm -hmm. like i I deal with that monday to friday and then any spare time i've got i'm just trying to plan and then you know it's tough but i'm trying i I want i really want to get something out um before the end of this year and, and hopefully hopefully i will yeah fingers crossed for you and I, I know a lot of uh, people in, in in a number of fields are trying to do something by the end of the year hopefully uh things so fingers yeah, crossed this is I, I'm, I'm excited for you <laughs> well yeah, yeah but, i'm, uh, I'm I, excited I, as well i just want to get it done now it's it's because you put a lot of men and effort into this you know eight years of training it's not it's nothing to be sniffed at you know um i know people that and i was a bit like that myself you know i oh, will go in a studio we'll just sing a song and blah 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 you know get it but i should have i should if i wanted to do it i should have done it the way you you've done it uh, it's got, never got, too late sir. it's never get, too late it's too, it's too late look at me my gray hairs you know hey, t- you can t- appeal t- to a completely different audience there mate oh, you're a silver fox my, my, my audience can't dance that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> well then you just change your nature of your songs right and then they sit and listen love you can songs. be a concert singer where people just come and sit and listen what the desi des o'connor or something right and uh <laughs> yeah 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 look at that but, but um, a niche market right a little, there. little niche market very niche you know? <laughs> <laughs> but look this is it it's, it's go on go on steve sorry i was just gonna say it's, it's it's about finding your market really and like it's it's a crazy uh, the way the kind of the, the, the music industry I, I see going, it's crazy, man, to find a niche and, you know, um, like what I like or the kind of music that I'm trying to release isn't necessarily kind of what's really banging at the moment in India yeah. or Canada. And, you know, I'm more of a folk kind of this kind of 
singer and, and you know that's my kind of um, yeah. my kind of influence and it's just what I like doing that's just yeah, yeah what, I'm, what I'm really into I, and I try and sing like that I try and deliver that and it's there's not much of it that happens now so but it's about trying to create a niche or trying to create find a niche of people that enjoy there's, music. there's one thing about folk and that kind of style of singing I mean lots of fads and uh, sort of styles come in you got this sort yeah. of poppy sort of vibe and sort of more yeah, mellower yeah, yeah. vibe. But yeah, folk always comes back at some point and slaps people does. on it's the face. It does. It's always like a cycle, right? <laughs> it's always like a cycle. Like if you saw it in the UK, I mean, uh, the early kind of 60s and 70s was quite heavily folk and stuff. And then the 80s moved over to kind of more the electronic fusion uh, kind of, you know, you had the Pavisis that were amazing and samplers and, and stuff. And, you know, and then the 90s, Shindabadi kind of brought it back to folk and, you know, the dolls and the Thumbis and the Algorithm came back and then you had the, the garage era and then it came back to folk with all the duets and the Dissy Gani and stuff so it, it's a cycle um, it's a cycle and I think you know it's the, the UK kind of I think hopefully um, you know there's a few good young singers and, and, and people coming out now and I think lockdowns lit, I think lockdowns really helped a lot of people in the sense that they've had a lot of chances to showcase their talent. So like, you know, even when we're sitting at home, we do these kind of, you know, lockdown jams and stuff where, you know, I've recorded this, this, this instrument and I've sang on it and stuff. I've done the same. So I think it's, uh, it's a good place at the moment for the UK to be in. And, uh, and hopefully there, there's a lot of new singers kind of that come uh, and, and release music uh, yeah. and, and kind of put the UK back on top where it belongs yeah well look Stephen, we'll come towards the end and yeah. uh it's been great chatting to you i've really enjoyed it i before oh, thank I you i've you, enjoyed it as well no, no that's i mean it's great it was talking about bands that could do it all evening yeah. couldn't we and uh all evening. I, I before you go i'll ask you you know where people can follow you and that kind of stuff but i just want to yeah put, uh, bring up a point have you worn a man united top on my show i did I, I you know i was waiting i was waiting all this show because i know you're a liverpool fan and I thought, well, they, we were either going to break the ice or kind of create tension or something. And I, I, you know, I was waiting. I was honestly waiting for you to bring it up. And if you hadn't have brought it up, I was going to bring it up myself. But yeah, man, I'm, you've yeah. got to, you've got to support your own. You got to, you know, stick, stay loyal to your team, right? You, you, you've worn it on purpose, I know, right? And I, yeah, I, I was, did. No, I'm not, not going to lie. Uh, it wasn't the, the only piece of clothing I found. I saw it, and I was like, <laughs> Satman is a Liverpool fan. Why not? Hey, why not? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't mind. It's a good time to be a Liverpool fan. But it was. It, yeah, it's I, a great time to be fair. I, I I saw it right, and I was asking you a question. I thought, is that Man United? Because your mic yeah, was sli- I mean, slightly covering the badge, right? And I it was. Sure. It was. I mean, I can bring it a bit closer if you want. I don't mind. I'm sorry, mate. We're just running out of time now. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> the Zoom time's running out, right? <laughs> no, it's free... a great time to be a Liverpool fan, but uh, we're now, optimistic. We're always optimistic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it's a great club. Man United are a great club. You know, they're going to come back at some point. There's without doubt. Without doubt. You're just being polite, really, aren't you? I am. I'm going to cut, really, that really polite, cut that yeah. bit out. Cut that bit out. Yeah, I can hear it. You just <laughs> that the, the, the only time I've heard you be faking this whole interview. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Get off the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like it. That's no, more on, like it. on a serious note, uh, Steve. Uh, don't don't um, sidetrack me on football, man. <laughs> I'll be here all day. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's another pod. <laughs> talk about football all day so it's a diff that's a conversation for another day man yeah. <laughs> but look uh, uh thanks for coming on i'm really excited for you i'm looking forward to so when your album or single comes out please come back on and uh oh, have definitely. a chat about it tell me about it i'm gonna and, be pestering uh, you all the time now yeah no come on mate and uh <laughs> just for people listening and watching now at, uh at home tell us where we can follow yeah. you and your updates and that kind of stuff yeah so uh, Facebook, Stephen Sohota, uh, Instagram, Stephen Sohota, Twitter, Stephen Sohota, uh, my YouTube channel, I've just been a bit lazy, um, but there is a YouTube channel and it will be Stephen Sohota. Uh, I've just got to upload all my content that I put on kind of Instagram and Facebook and stuff. So yeah, just Stephen Sohota um, on, on all platforms, even TikTok. I'm even on TikTok really, yeah. right? Um, I don't use it much. I just put some of my videos from instagram on there and i cheat a little bit um but i haven't opened the app in about a month or so yeah that's crazy it's too easy it's too easy man you just sit there and you just 
watch videos and before you know it, it's an hour gone out of your time and you think, oh shit, what I'm gonna yeah, do? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Steven and Sahota are on, on all uh, platforms. Um, so please um, follow, like, um, drop me a message. I don't bite. I'm quite a nice guy, really. <laughs> uh, and, and, that's, and that's about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Easy to remember, Stephen. So I'll put it on all the yeah. show links as well. Uh, yes, so people can you. click on and follow you. Um, I, I Get your YouTube channel up. I've just had a new one made. And I'll tell you, it's hard work, right? I've just uploaded all my <laughs> previous oh. interviews. Jesus, it's taken me so long. Yeah, I've noticed they've all... That's why I had to, like, I had to have a shower and I had to, like, sort my hair out and I had to sort my beard. I thought, bloody hell, oh, man, it's going to film this and it's going to go on YouTube. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I did see. But I've just got to... I've got the channel... Just yeah, just you get sidetracked and then you work and then you do this yeah, and then so you have to practice and so yeah, gotta yeah. stick all my stuff on there and, and I will do it and I, I just yeah once you've it. done it I've, but I've now got, I've said it you gotta do out it out loud that means I've gotta do it you right. gotta do it you gotta do it I, I put them all on there now and I'm releasing them slowly it's good once you've done it but yeah. God man it's hard work right so but good luck look yeah. Stephen good luck mate thank, thank and. You. Uh, so, or, like I said, please come back on when when your uh, single's ready or your video's out or whatever. Definitely. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing it all. And the best of luck, honestly, I'm supporting you all the way. Supporting, I, I uh, lost you. Um, am I still? Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got you yeah. back. Now, you're back. I, I was just saying, good luck, and I'm supporting you all the way. And uh, thank you. No, that's fine. And uh, I'm 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 really excited for the future for you. Uh, yeah. Back- no, thank you, Sat, for having me on my first actual interview, and it's a podcast, and like so. Uh, I will definitely remember you and I'm really famous. <laughs> no, no, thank you very much, Sat, for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, thank you. Thank you. And we'll speak soon.